Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Tim Hemmer, and I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence using social media or any kind of data source that you wrote yourself. And you throw it kind of in the cloud, you bring it back, and it comes out with a profile of uh, needs, values, consumption, preferences, and a little bit more, um, a little bit more in depth that, but I wrote a web app to show the, the results, but we'll get into AI in general in a second here. Sponsored by Skynet from Terminator, it's a joke for the older folks. Uh, StixelDev is my Twitter handle, mostly tech stuff. Um, I'm a web developer freelancer, and also I've been teaching some newer technologies like AI robotics, drone programming, and uh, self-driving cars in the last year. And did some computer science and some business in the education field. So just an overview of AI, a couple um, categories, and this is very subjective. I tried to find a, one that says it all, but I've seen a lot of different versions of this. So you got reactive machines where it has the current data at time, it's gonna make a decision based upon that, like a computer playing chess. There's nothing before that or after that's considered. It's at that time, it's gonna do what it thinks best with the current state. But then you have the self-driving cars, right? They gotta know the speed limit, they gotta keep that in memory, so there's some, like, so you don't get, you know, if you see a cop, you might wanna know what the speed limit is before you see the cop, right? So that's in your limited memory, so that's another AI. Then theory of mind, so think of like animals, they have thoughts and emotions just like humans, but then we have self-awareness. We can think about thinking. So think about that, if AI got to that level, that'd be pretty crazy, like iRobot, for example, the movie. Some applications, what can you use? Well, uh, Charlie showed something today about image classification and how you can change a photo to look like a different photo. Um, so machine learning is what we're gonna be focusing on. Give it a bunch of data, you know, whether it be images or translations. Um, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. And for our example, like, it takes words that people use this and it's gonna profile, like a person of this type will use this type of word is a better way to say it. And it has like a different percentage that comes back in those, like this image of a dog looks like 80% of a dog. And then computer vision, so self-driving cars, it uses that image classification that I talked about, like that looks like a person, that looks like a car, this is a lane. And then you have pattern recognition, so facial recognition, seeing who, you know, this looks like this person, okay, let them in. Natural language processing, how you break apart a sentence and try to see what you're trying to say. Uh, emotions, whether it be like looking at you or listening to your voice, and is this person scared? Is this person nervous? Is this person a threat? And there's tons more, obviously. So in 2011, you might have heard about IBM Watson come out and they, they beat some really smart Jeopardy people using all the data that's, you know, like a big, huge Wikipedia, for example, of knowledge. And that, you know, that was seven years ago. So today there's a cloud in IBM Watson where you can call IBM and there's different stuff here. We're gonna be using the personality insights today and that's, that'll give you that needs and values we talked about. But they also have things like speech to text where I'm talking and then it'll give you the written version of that. Natural language processing, we kind of talked about that. Visual recognition is that image classification where it's like this is a dog. And translations, English to Spanish and vice versa. Uh, you got your voice analyzer. Are they using threatening words? Is this customer not happy? If they're not happy, what should we do? That's kind of a useful thing to know. Maybe some people don't pick up those cues. Uh, Watson Discovery is just kind of a beast. It's a lot of data and trends. Just give it a bunch of data like, like Walmart sales or something. It's going to figure out some things. So the personality insights. Predict characteristics, needs, and values through written text. Understand habits and preferences of your customers. And it's kind of creepy if you think about it. People are going to be taking something that you wrote and basically profiling you. Like, like I profiled, maybe you guys are nerds because you came to a tech talk. You know? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So think about that. So personality insights, consumption preferences, needs, personality, and values. And then, so 
my source that I chose, I just need a block of words. It doesn't even have to be sentences. It can just be words that you used, like a paper. If you give me a paper, I could send it to IBM Watson and it'll give me that profile of you. So I chose Twitter API just because everybody knows Twitter as well as there's a lot of content on there. Most people write stuff themselves. Um, you can get their whole feed up to 200 posts. You can search by tags otherwise. Engagement, you can send messages through those APIs. Embed tweets to websites, just some other things they use. So the high level process that I went through is register for both APIs, IBM and Twitter. And Watson is a paid quota service at a certain point. Like I won't hit that threshold because I'm not using it that much. You call Twitter, you get back the data, you send it to Watson, on the, both on the server side, get back, and then you give it back to a web page that I called initially. So I wrote that in ember.js if you were curious. So if there's any questions or comments right now, no? Okay. Because we can go to the demo. And if you guys want to, we can use your Twitter handle as well. It'll do a live one. I got some cached ones for us. Um, so earlier, it was actually Charlie used Donald Trump as his main thing to start off, which was funny because that's also used, also used as well. Um, so as you can see, a bunch of words over here. Doesn't really make much sense, but it makes sense to IBM Watson. Just once, what kind of words does this person use? Are they happy, sad? What, what kind of emotion, emotional words are they using? So that's a decent amount. I'd say you about want that much data to get a, a decent, accurate representation of their profile. And so I just made this Ember app to show, instead of like a bunch of data that is not visually appealing, designing, right? Um, wrote the web app so you can kind of see a little bit better. Intellect is 98. Some people might argue that. Uh, yeah. So this is very subjective as well as objective. Um, but keep in mind, whatever you're using for a source of data, that's huge because are they a different person in this like facade of being online versus in real life? So think about that. What you choose as your data source for AI is huge for biasness as well as like accuracy. You know, could they play the system? Could they beat the loop, the loophole of it all? Um, so intellect, authority challenging, maybe that should be high, right? For Donald Trump. Um, artistic, adventurous, emotional, imagination, 23 was pretty low. So I, I re um, ordered them from high to low. So it kind of sees like what's their strength, what's their weakness. So openness. Are they cautious, self-discipline? Orderliness, order, orderliness, assertiveness, activity level, cheerfulness, excitement seeking. So agreeableness is another big category. Trust, modesty, sympathy, emotional range. And then we get to more of the needs. So he doesn't have much needs apparently is what this is. This is kind of a big deal, right? It's pretty much close to zero on this one, on most of them. So with just that little data, are you starting to see a little bit more like, wow, you know, you think maybe just middle numbers, no, this one was pretty extreme. You might pick up something on people you know, maybe uh, a job interview. Someone comes in a job interview, okay, I got their Twitter handle, not, not hard to find, right? And then you can profile them, you know, it's not completely accurate, and you must question that, but is this better than 0% of not knowing? Is this faster than calling in an interview for one hour? You decide, but it's there for you to use. Values, so not much values. And then consumption preference is a little interesting. They just do a zero, halfway, or whole. So three things, so like 0.5 would be maybe. One would be yes. So ideally I would make this like a picture or something like thumbs up for yes. Likely to be sensitive to ownership costs when buying automobiles. How the heck do you find that with 2,000 words? Is this kind of mind boggling to me? But, you know, they're, they're there. Health and activity preferences, environmental, entrepreneurship preferences, movie preferences, music, reading, volunteering. So, so, so hey, Tim, yeah. I see the likely to engage in uh, spur of the moment purchases. Okay. Impulse. So if you want to try my Twitter handle and see if you get it right, that's all right. <laughs> I was wondering, okay, I might. Is this Matt Payne? Matt Payne or. 
Sound good? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Knows that I buy things on the first okay. No, it's wrong. Yeah? <laughs> and sometimes people view the opposite of what is true. Not to say I'm defending this, I but. Yeah. But it's definitely there. Thanks for proving it wrong. <sighs> <laughs> on the spot, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, keep that in mind. Are you posting things like, oh man, I gotta buy this. This is the latest gadget toy. The new Apple product, ooh. See, I need to do that, Yeah. So yeah, it'd be more interesting being analytical like yourself. What drives that to get to that result is the craziness of it all. Um, is there any questions or does anybody want to try to their own Twitter handle and kind of see what's, you can do this after if you want more private, but um, you're welcome to ask questions now or it's pretty much all I got. So if I remove my Twitter handle, I want to see if it exists. Aiden F77, A-I-D-E-N. 77? F77. Okay. Probably not. Oh, well, okay. So, are your posts archived? Uh, no, it should be just gone. That's interesting. Unless it kept... Well, unless it kept... Here. Here. Just to make sure... Just to make sure I'm going to refresh. Yeah, that might have been the old one. Bug. So is your source online, Tim? Can I, like, download it and try it? I don't, but I can give it to you, but you're going to need the API keys. Oh, that's alright. Yeah. It's just, well, depends what you want. I got the web app, that'll be easy. But um, the node stuff is about a page and a half of code. It's not that much. Um, the APIs do all the work for you, right? In today's age, you, you don't have to know much programming. A lot of stuff is on libraries or cloud or, or we just all do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was interesting. Um, kind of interested in a lot of AI stuff now. But it lost, it's kind of hard. But this, um, the IBM Watson and all that stuff on the cloud, IBM Cloud, they do the work for you. Instead of you taking a million photos and training it, learn how to train it and do all that math calculation, they did that for you. So if you're a like, mom and pa shop, it makes sense because you don't have the resources or the time to learn it, to run it. I think I did like a million photos or something like that, it took a day and a half and I have a really, really good video card, like $600 one. That's like almost like second one best around right now. When that took a day and a half because it's doing all this math calculations. So keep that in mind too. Do so you know the Siraj YouTube channel? Yes. The guy that talks about machine learning? Yep. He talked about a fellow that trained uh, something to recognize good, good cucumbers from bad cucumbers. Is that the kind of thing you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, for example, an analogous to that is medical stuff. And there was, I read a thing about AI was more accurate than eye doctors on finding certain diseases in eyes than they could. They were about a third accurate, and then they were a third accurate on that if they were asked the next day the same thing. <laughs> like a third of that. They were likely not to say, oh, no, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, AI, if you got enough, it's all about the data, though. You have to have a lot, a lot of data. To, so it can learn all that over time. It's like a naive one to three year old is what I kind of tell people. That's kind of where we're at right now. Like, oh, dog, right? You teach a kid, that's a dog. You know, it might take them longer to learn that versus a computer, but that's kind of where we're at. And you've heard about the self-driving cars, accidents and stuff. And it, you know, 8,000 cars pass this, this, you know, um, Y road, but yet this one Tesla one ran, or whatever it was, ran right into the, the median. So what creates that? Was it the time of day, like the sun was just right beaming off the road? I don't know. But there's definitely some challenges coming up in AI and there's definitely gonna be some job opportunities as well. Just think about all these little robotic stuff they're working on too. That's gonna need a lot of AI stuff as well. So any other questions, comments? That's pretty crazy to me. Um, you'd almost have to have that 
fifth level that self-aware to even consider that, I would think. Because you're talking about the one in the Middle East, I think. Uh, yeah. There was some controversy on that. I'm yeah. Just what your thought on that was being more of a computer guy, I'm more black and white, unfortunately. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's either pass or fail. There's that gray area, and that's always confusing to a computer programmer. Um, but right now, not at the current state, I think that's kind of silly, personally. Um, was that about citizenship or for an, an AI? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a robot that has citizenship. Uh, so what's happening in Spain and Finland, for example, that those robots are from They're getting taxed. Yeah, so they're getting taxed, and that's why they want to implement it. Space income thing, basically they are Right. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of conversations coming up. It's going to change the game. Um, there's a lot of talk about universal income, because when everybody loses jobs, those more tedious and mundane jobs where it's more um, beneficial to just automate their job through AI, you know, just like quality assurance of cucumbers, for example, that's going to be a job, right? And it's going to be more efficient. AI doesn't take smoke breaks. They don't take sick days. They don't take vacation. They just need to be oiled or maintained. So think about that. But they're talking about universal income. What I kind of consider is maybe we'll work just less and there'll be more jobs available because we're working less, like 32-hour work weeks. Is anybody against that? I'd hope not. <laughs> I wouldn't be. Because um, that gives you more time for your family, more hobbies, maybe you can learn some more on the side. Um, but that's a big concern right now too, is the universal income idea. So we'll see. Um, it'll change a lot of stuff and maybe it's more progressive in other countries too. I know Dubai is pretty leading in the AI field as well. Any other questions? Oh, like RoboCop, right? Yeah, I see the healthcare field uh, getting very uh, helpful with that stuff. I'm for that, you know, quality of life. Cost might be a concern, right? Like how much does it cost to make a whole arm? That would that'd be pretty expensive. But over time, as with technology, things get cheaper, right? So hopefully that gets more in everyday consumer hands, affordable. But I think that's a good thing. The million dollar man or what it was, or what was the, Matt, you know things. What was the, was the million dollar bio man or whatever? The old, it was an old show. Well, anyway, they like, yeah, they made, they redid this person. It was a TV show. I didn't know too much about it. I think it is, yeah, something like that. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, well today, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of the stuff that, you know, like the Jetsons and TV shows like that are, they're kind of becoming real, like at least half of that stuff's becoming like within our grasp in the future. Like, I don't know, self-driving cars, a couple of years probably will be here. Imagine this, you don't own a car anymore, even here in Omaha, you don't own a car, you just rent time on a car and no one's driving it. So it's a lot cheaper, but that's jobs lost. Well, thank you, appreciate the time. Thank you.